everyone. My name is Gary McDonald. I am proud to be serving as your 2021 Reno Sparks Association of Realtors President and welcome to The Point. So today we're going to be talking about bridging the gap between the realtor and the mortgage company and what this means for successful home ownership. To help us better understand this important topic is our special guest, Danielle Kirby, Mortgage Consultant of Greater Nevada Mortgage. Good morning, Danielle. How are you today? I'm doing well, Gary. Thanks for having me. We just had a great conversation prior to filming, and you told me that you bring something very special to this, that you were an active realtor for a long time. I was. I was an active realtor for 20 years before I got into lending. Oh, wow. So this is the, you bring something really special today, so I really appreciate that. Thank you. So let's talk about realtors and lenders working more effectively together to create realistic timelines to get a home from an offer into an acceptance, into a closing, into a new home for the buyers. Absolutely. So first thing that I um, discuss with my borrowers and agents is I can't read minds, believe it or not. So the number one thing that is most important, I think, is communication. So first of all, if you are an agent and you're out there writing um, offers for your borrowers that are pre-qualified, number one, call. Danielle, I'm writing an offer for borrower Smith and I want, we're gonna be writing on this property. Can you check the taxes? Can you check the HOA dues and make sure they still fall in line with the qualification letter you wrote for me? Absolutely. That is one key thing is, is having that vetted on the property to make sure the property and the, the borrowers mesh, number one. Number two, in this crazy market, often we're scrambling, we're writing offers on the weekends, and we're not writing offers for just one borrower. You guys as realtors are very, very busy. You've got lots of borrowers. If you get an accepted offer on a Saturday, don't wait until a Tuesday or a Wednesday to let me know because you guys, your contracts are written on calendar days. They're not written on business days. So now I've just lost five calendar days on ordering an appraisal. Okay, um, th those are some of the things that I would say is number one communication is, is the first step in making sure we're keeping in line with those timelines that are so critical in a contract. Great points. Now we as an association have been pointing out, uh, you're not the first lender we've had, and we've had, we've had this conversation before. And one of the topics that's been coming up is that rather than just writing a pre-approval letter, that you take it a little bit farther, take it into underwriting, so when that offer letter comes to a seller, it means more. Tell us what steps you need to take in order to do that. So that being pre-approved is I've filled out an application and you've run my credit. Being pre-underwritten means I have provided you with my tax returns, my most recent paycheck stubs, my bank account statements. If funds for a down payment are coming from a gift, we have sourced those funds. And that is very important in today's um, offer process is sourcing funds to make sure the funds for the down payment um, are seasoned, if you will. So having all of that information to where all we can actually open that file and send it into our underwriting queue, all we're waiting that for then is a house to match that borrower. And that is something that Greater Nevada does do. And um, you know, it's just having that conversation with the realtor and the borrower up front saying, we want this pre underwritten because we want our offer to be that much stronger in today's competitive market. Fantastic. I agree 100%. Now, you mentioned earlier on uh, writing an offer and getting accepted on a weekend in the calendar days. Talk about the timelines that are important to a lender in this process and also to the buyer and to the seller. So I, I really think that the timelines that are important to a lender are really very similar to what is important to a realtor. So for example, number one key, appraisal. Appraisals on average are taking longer than two weeks. If you're writing your contract, I would allow for more than 14 days for that appraisal to be returned. Number two, um, because our market is so busy, uh, 
our preliminary title reports. We often see those taking longer than um, we have received them in the past. So again, working closely with your title company, knowing, hey, what is your time frame for returning prelims right now? Are we looking at seven days? Are we looking at 14 days? And of course, most important, that HOA package, making sure that the seller is, is paying for and that we are getting those ordered. That is very important to the lender because we need to make sure we have those master insurance policies, making sure that we know that fees and charges haven't gone up, they haven't changed. So those are very, very important to us. Now I know you guys also have inspections, but again, for the lender, we really need those HOA docs, the prelims, and our appraisal. So you mentioned appraisal. You've mentioned it a couple different times now. Yes. And what I'm learning in the marketplace is that on a loan transaction, that appraisals can be taking a little bit longer. Can Absolutely. You and are they getting more expensive? And can you address those points? Absolutely. So one of the things um, in Northern Nevada is I'm finding we don't have enough appraisers for the demand of our market. So it's supply and demand. What an appraiser will say to me is, Danielle, if you want this appraisal back in 14 days, I'm gonna charge you a premium for that. And on a, the whole, there's no um, ceiling for appraisal charges. So based on any specific appraiser's uh, workload, they can say, if you want this appraisal and it's that important to you by this time frame, this is my cost for doing so. And again, it's a supply and demand. I've heard this before. And I've also heard uh, when we talk about timelines and I think one of the things we could talk to people about is slowing down a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but it, 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 when we talk about the market being on fire, the market is on fire. Limited inventory, more buyers than sellers. Correct. And that has not changed this year and it hasn't changed in the past year. Right. So in all likelihood, my crystal ball is broken, but in all likelihood, that is going to continue. So if you've got a buyer and you've worked closely with a realtor, give me some things that they can do to make their offer stand out against maybe 10 other offers on a property. Great question, and I thank you for asking that question. Um, first of all, one of the things I'm seeing a lot of um, in, in speaking with listing agents, because I will call a listing agent and let them know that I have written the pre-approval letter for borrower Smith and that, I, that they are strong, qualified buyers. In speaking with those same listing agents, they say, thank you so much for giving me that call. However, um, right now what I'm seeing is if you can waive that appraisal or pay cash, that's what your offer stands the best chance of, of securing this property. There are also other things we can do. If you, uh, not everybody has the luxury to bring in all cash or have an extra $100,000 laying around to pay over appraised value, what you can do is if you have a 20% down payment, how can we restructure that um, offer to where maybe you're putting 10% down and putting some funds aside to, in the event the um, property doesn't appraise, to have some funds set aside to pay over that appraised value. Ways you can structure the offer to get your offer accepted is instead of just asking the seller to pay customary closing costs like the owner's policy of title insurance or half of the transfer tax, maybe as the buyer you say, Mr. Seller, I will pay those closing costs on your behalf because I really want your property. The other thing is, is you know, let's not ask for repairs. If you've already done your inspections and you know that there might be a leaky faucet, let's not worry about those little things and rather tell the seller, hey, we're just so thrilled that you're looking at our offer. We're not gonna charge you little things here and there. We're gonna just make our offer as solid as we can and move forward. Danielle, you bring a lot to the table and I wanna thank you for being here today. It's you bring my pleasure. Up some great points. Now tell our audience how they can reach you. I actually work out of the branch on Vista and I-80 right there at the freeway. So you can either walk right into my office, 
You can also email me. My email is d, like Danielle, Kirby at gnms.com or my phone number, which is my cell phone. You can text or call is 775-830-1845. Danielle Kirby, thank you so much for being here today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. My <laughs> pleasure. So thank you for joining me today for this segment of June's To The Point video series. Join us next week when Angelica Reyes, 2021 Trustee Director, interviews Jed Spendlove of Safe Embrace in our next segment in the To The Point video series. Thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you next time when we get to the point. Have a great day. Thank you.